Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Network and Cisco Packet Tracer tutorials for beginner. Siavash is here and in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about the Network Address Translation or NAT and we are focusing on the NAT overload. NAT is a very common protocol we are using on our daily network especially in IPv4 world. So let's start this scenario from the scratch we have ISP side, we have a LAN side, at the moment don't have anything, but we are going to create. So we're going to the router, let's start with the ISP side, choose 129.11. And so many uh, students ask me about how can create the internet cloud. You can choose a router, choose a new cluster, and as you can see, the name is changed to the internet of cluster 1. Then we go to the cloud and start to configuration. Press no because we don't want to following the configuration wizard, enable the router and go to the global configuration mode. First of all, let's create the one loopback address for the 8.8.8.8. So interface loop back zero, loopback interface is up, IP address 8.8.8.8.255.0.0. So our loopback IP address is considered as a Google DNS is up. We go to another interface, which is the gigabit zero slash zero. We using the no shot to bring it up. IP address. Let's choose a public IP address like this: 175.10.0.1 slash 24.255.255.255.0. Okay, let's close close look. We got the interface loop back. Set the IP address 8.8.8. And we configure the gigabit zero is like zero and assign the IP address. Okay, it's time to using the show IP interface brief and our protocols for this gigabit is not up yet because physical interface is not connected. So ISP side is down. We go to the back and it's time for our local area network side. We choose another 2911 router. Okay, connect through the proper cabling, go to the gigabit zero slash zero, to the gigabit slash zero slash zero on the ISP side. And let's document our work. We got 8.8.8 .8 on this side. Here we go. We got the 175.10.0.1 slash. 24 in this side, which is usually disappeared because ISP don't give you this entire full slash 24, but this is just a lab. Okay, so let's get into the router. Okay, press no, enable, go to the global configuration mode, interface gigabit 0 slash 0, no shot. Let's IP address. This is a public IP address, which is the ISP gave to us in this scenario. Slash 2.255.255.0. So let's ping it. 175.10.2. Okay, here we go. We can ping the public IP address. So just sign the IP address and ping the outside. Let's do ping 8.0.0. .0. 8.8.8.8 .8 which we expected we are unable to ping it because at the moment we don't have any router information routing information in the router to go outside so we go to the global configuration mode add the static route IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0 0.0.0 to public IP address at 1 here we go this is a command take a look static default route to the public IP address. So here we go and do ping 8.8.8 .8 and this time we expected to see the some ping reply from the ISP side. So now our router is able to ping the outside. It's time to prepare the switch side by adding 12960 switch and this in this scenario I'm going to configure the router on a stick on a router and the switch size because it's easier. I may create another video to showing the how we can have a similar scenario in a layer three route switching in to in your network. Switch is ready. Let's connect it to port 24 to the gigabit zero slash one. Uh, let's 
just config the router side easy interface gigabit 0 slash 1 no shot since we are going to use the router on a stick we don't assign any IP address on interface itself instead we using the sub interfaces if you are not familiar with the router on a stick concept you can go back and watch the previous video we got a full video dedicated to the router on a stick method so this time interface g0 slash 1 dot 10 for the VLAN 10 I want to create two VLAN VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 on a LAN site okay so we assign the IP address but before that we have to mention that which VLAN is belong to this sub interface encapsulation dot q dot 1 q dot 10 and IP address is 192 dot 168 dot 10 one this is considered as a default gateway for the machines on a VLAN 10 okay so let's create another sub interface in sub interface is geo 0 slash 1 dot 20 okay sub interface is up choose the encapsulation dot 1q language of love for VLAN and this is a VLAN 20 IP address 192.168.20.1 let's put 20 slash 24 subnet mask and let's I zoom it for you you take a look at both sub interfaces this is a sub interface for VLAN 10 this is a sub interface with VLAN 20 we choose this encapsulation 10 and 20 and assign the IP address for each of them which consider as a default gateway for a PC which we are going to set up show IP interface brief oops get lock is on show IP interface brief and all the interfaces are up and ready outside interface point to the ISP this is a local public IP address you get from the ISP usually this is up interface for your the LAN segment and let's configure the switch side go to the command line enable the switch global configuration mode and let's create our VLAN VLAN 10 name IT VLAN 20 name staff okay we got two VLAN and exit do show VLAN let's see yes both VLANs are here so no need to worry okay you are quite familiar with this configuration if you're following the videos so let's create the trunk and interface fa slash 0 slash 24 switch port mode trunk and we allow all the interface are going so it's time to config sub access for access port for our uh, machines let's create interface range fa0 slash 1 to 4 okay switch port mode access and let's give them switch for access VLAN IT yeah VLAN 10 okay exit interface range FA0 slash 5 to 9 switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 20 which is stuff so let's zoom it just recap very fast interface FA0 slash 1 to 4 belong to the VLAN 10 and interface FA0 slash 5 to 9 or belong to the VLAN 20 here we go let's just double check the command show VLAN and you can see 1 to 4 VLAN 10 5 to 9 VLAN 20 here we go let's add some machines for IT department using the laptop for the stuff just use a PC let's connect them accordingly laptop fast internet go to the obviously VLAN 10 and PC fast internet let's connect it to the VLAN yeah 5 should be okay let me double check okay perfect let's document our job okay this is a trunk hello everyone this is a VLAN 10 here we got the VLAN 20 and this is okay let's go it's 192.168.20.0 24 and here we go okay 192.168.10.0 documentation is very important for IT jobs after next day you forget what did you define for your network okay here we go VLAN 20 let's make it much nicer so 
today. Filter, no worry. This might not look necessary, but let's do it. Make it nice in one shot. Because if you document your job at the moment of configuration, it's done. After that, only few number of engineering really doing the documentation. Okay, let's put dot ten and dot ten. I'm just going to statically assign the IP address, uh, but you can use um, DHCP. You learn how to do that. Go to the laptop, desktop, at the configuration. 192.168.10.10 okay slash 24 and the gateway is sub interface on a router which is exit point for this network 10.1 here we go let's zoom it you can see it easily perfect go back okay double check ip config like any other windows machine okay we got all the information and let's ping our default gateway, which is dot one on a ten. Okay, as you can see, we can ping our gateway, but we still unable to go out because we need the network address translation or NAT to allow this traffic is goes via our public IP address to the outside world. Okay, so let's assign the IP address on a PC also. Let me configuration. 192.168.20.10 slash 24 192.168.20.1 here we go do the double check ping gateway 192.168.1 okay good ping outside world which we don't have perfect this is what expected okay so so far our configuration is done uh, and we have a ISP site internet and our local area so it's time for configuration and net the most important things in a net first step to identify the inside network and outside network this is easy in this case because we have an outside world of the isp and we have inside of our lan so any interface on a router which we want to apply the net point to the local area network is considered as an inside which are to our, our two sub interfaces. So I'll go back to the router, go to global configuration mode, interface G0 slash 1.10, sub interface for the VLAN 10, and using the IP NAT question mark, IP NAT question mark, and this is point to our LAN, which consider as an inside. Press enter. Do the same thing for the sub interface for, for VLAN 20. Use the up arrow key, lazy factor. Okay, and we using the IP net inside again. Here we go. Very easy. IP net inside. So we define the inside interfaces. Exit and go to the gigabit zero is like zero, which is point to the ISP and point it IP net outside. Here we go. This is done. We got both interfaces inside and outside. Now it's time to define what traffic must be netted. For defining the traffic, usually in networking, we are using the access lists. Here we do the same thing. So in global configuration mode, IP access list, let's use the name access list. And we just need to the, know the uh, source traffic. So we can use the standard access list. Access lists are discovered on previous video. If you forget anything, just go back and recap it. So I call it NAT LAN. And I just um, filter the traffic from the VLAN 10 first because I want you exactly see the differentiation between when we define the traffic in access list and when we don't define it. So, okay, in this case, uh, we just permit traffic from 192.168.10.0 and using the wildcard mask 255.0.0.0.255 so show access list we have a NAT LAN access list which is we define it here as you can see and we permit the 192.168.10.0 traffic and now it's a time for the long NAT syntax is very easy, don't afraid of it, it's very logic and you can understand it easily. 
use the IP NAT. I use a question mark to show you what we are doing. We NAT from the inside by the source of the list, which means that we define the access list and now we want to refer back to that list, exact name of our access list, NAT LAM, and where we want to go out through the interface or pool. Pool means that you have a more than one public IP address. You may create the pool of all, all of your public IP address and define the exit point, the one of the member of the pool. In this scenario, we got only one public IP address on G0 slash one, and we're using the interface G0 slash zero, sorry. And this is the important part, the keyword overload, which means that the NAT using the port access translation or PAT which means you can send and forward more than one network at the same time over your NAT to the outside. If I don't use the overload, at the same time I only can apply the NAT only on one IP address. While overload, the device using the port address to differentiate the traffic and send the traffic out and bring it back. Okay, so let's take a look at the long command here. IPNAT is a command from the inside. What's the source of the inside? The access list, we call it NATLAN. And what's the interface going out? G0 slash 0. And finally, the important keyword of the overload. This is a very important. Okay, so press enter. Now, I expect that to have a access from the 192.168. Okay, let's create this typo. Perfect to the outside world. Go back to the command prompt, use the up arrow key, and this time I can go out. As you can see, the NAT is working. I go back to the router, show IP NAT statistic is the one thing. You can just show the statics of, of our NATing, of how many dynamic NAT is defined, where is the outside, what is the inside. But the most important command is show IP NAT translation which is showing the NAT table for you. The ping is going from the inside, 175.10.02 is a global inside, and going to the inside local from 10.10 .10 and using the, as you can see, clearly the patch is working and overload can differentiate your traffic for each ping based on the port number. And we expected that the PC2 still unable to ping 8.8.8 .8 .8 because we don't define the traffic for this traffic. Okay, so we're using the ping t 8.8.8. .8 .8. That's the reason I didn't define the traffic for the VLAN 20 in access list. We are going to add it now by running the ping on a Backside, let me see, can I bring the both things at the same time? PC, oops. Okay, yes, I can, I think I can. Okay, here we go. Okay, going to the IP access list, standard NAT LAN, the same access list. And this time, uh, adding the permit 192.168.20.0 for the traffic of the VLAN 20. And by pressing enter, I'm assuming if the traffic is coming from the staff network or VLAN 20, you can net it and go outside and the left screen window, you can easily see that. Now my staff segment also can go out from uh, the NAT router using the show IP NAT translation. See, take a look at the, this traffic and as you can see, easily the NAT table is populated and the both segment can go out easily. Okay, let's close this. This is an entire network we have. So we set up the overload or dynamic net in PAT indeed in this scenario. Uh, in a future video, we will cover the static net when you've got a situation like you have a hosting and I will create another video to using the another layer tree switch which is a very common and modern network instead of using the router on a stick scenario. Um, I hope this video is informative for you. If you like the video please subscribe and share the video among your IT friends and see you soon. Thank you very much.